Right now I'm in the Northwest Territories, maybe 25 miles south of the Arctic Circle. And these are the places that I just absolutely love. When fall rolls around, it's just gets in my blood. In fact, it's, it's in my blood the entire year. Hopefully with good weather, we'll get out tonight, so. I know hunting is a controversial topic these days. Something that I get addressed with all the time. People ask me, how can I be a hunter or why am I a hunter? And it's something that's really hard to explain. Hunting is something that lives in my soul. I think about it all year round. It's something that is consuming and something that it's not, it's, it's not a decision whether, I, whether I'm going to go or not going to go or going to do it or not going to do it. It's not casual for me. It's not, it's not a hobby for me. It's just something that I absolutely have to do. There, there are many, many points uh, along the realms of like conservation and population management. You know, animals don't have the free reign of wild places like they used to and, and sometimes when we hunt them we're able to kill certain animals in the population that make the population stronger, make the population dynamics and age class stronger. So that's, that's a point for it. Another point for it is food for the table and that's a really strong point for it because we get to take home really clean, really lean protein for our families. You know, it's, it's, it's difficult to discuss, it's difficult to uh, address. People say, why are you a hunter? Why are you a hunter in modern times when you can just go to the grocery store and buy meat? Really, everyone that's on the earth right now has come from a strong background of hunting. Even if you're the president of PETA or you're a vegetarian, the fact of the matter is your relatives, your ancestors were strong hunters and gatherers, otherwise you wouldn't be here. And some people have have you know kind of evolved out of that role if you will but I think it still lives really really strong in some of us and I think it actually probably really lives strong in all of us it's just that we have certain conveniences in the modern world that take that element away you can go to the grocery store and get meat you can go to a restaurant and get meat but if you couldn't if you couldn't your your desire to be a hunter would probably just come through just as strong as I have we definitely did our job and the arrow did its job it's just an awesome experience to kill a bull like this in this territory. And we've worked so hard, so hard. I would challenge most people to ask them kind of what right they have to judge me or really what, what was their interest level or bar barrier of entry and in going into the grocery store and buying meat off the shelf. I think unless you're a small time rancher, small time farmer or, or a hunter or fisherman, you really have no idea where your meat has come from and you really have no idea even your vegetables you really have no idea what you're eating what you're putting in your body and most people they don't even think about it well we think about it you know it's uh it's a lot of work but man is it worth it it's an incredibly rewarding way to get our to get our food and it's very rewarding to come up to a place like this you have to be diligent about your fitness you can't come up here and just willy-nilly walk around you have to train all year to do this stuff and your gear has to be right. You have to dress right. We're very particular in how we dress with our clothing and we keep layering systems so that we are able to thermoregulate our bodies and stay dry with, with tons of rain and snow and wind. So There's a lot of investment that goes into coming up to getting our meat and to coming into this country, but we want to experience fantastic things and to experience fantastic things, we have to put ourselves in fantastic places. And this certainly is one of those. Seeing the wolves and the bears and you know being 
charged by grizzlies and last year we were in Alaska in the Arctic Circle and we had five or six adult wolves come in and start hunting us, come in just right around us, maybe 10, 15 yards. Amazing. Amazing. One of the best days of my life. One of the greatest experiences of my life. It's not my first time spending time with the wolf pack. But, uh, man, I hope it's not my last either. What a fantastic evening. I mean, who can say that they've been stalked by a pack of wolves? What an unbelievable experience. It's just awesome. It's just awesome experiences. Anytime you're up here, we try to stay as long as we can, 20, 30 days. Because the longer you're here, the more fantastic things happen. Um, I wouldn't live my life any other way than this. It's extremely rewarding and I, I dare to say that if I took any PETA representative or anti-hunter or vegetarian or anyone else that seems to be against hunting up here and showed them what we do that they'd have a tremendous respect for what we do. So this is what we do, this is why we do it and, and we love building films around it. We love capturing this cinematography and we love capturing the story and we love telling it to audiences. Shooting jib shots off the top of the boat <laughs> and in crocs in the rain. People have really responded to the work and we work really hard to get the shots. We work really hard to tell the story and we love going to far off places. We spend almost all of our time in the North Country. It's where we really love it, but so much of the world to explore. 